The EPA estimates that there are over 2 million idle oil and gas wells in the United States. Up to 40% of these wells are leaking methane because they're not plugged. It would take $193 billion to fix it. It would take over 100 years, and we're going to leak hundreds of millions of tons of CO2 equivalent in the form of methane if we just keep on doing what we're doing. RenewWell's mission is to convert hundreds of thousands of idle wells into hundreds of gigawatt hours worth of energy storage. I grew up in Houston, Texas. I spent four years at UT Austin studying mechanical engineering. I went to go work for Shell as a completions engineer for five years, where I realized I didn't want to work for a big oil and gas company anymore. It's figuring out how to get the very last drops of oil out of the ground. So I spent two years in Stanford, and that's where Renewell was born. Kemp and I were fast friends at Stanford. Politically, we land different, religiously very different, but the values we've ended up with are very much aligned. We're both very competitive. When we were first friends, we stumbled upon our mutual love of ping pong. We actually kept score at the beginning, and then after that we stopped. <laughs> I think it's probably for the best. Renewell is a nice place where we don't compete against each other, we're on the same team, and I think that's part of what helps us get along. The problem that Renewell is addressing is legacy oil and gas wells. There are actually more idle wells in the United States than there are any other type of well. An idle well is something very specific. It's still owned by a company, it's not producing, and it is not plugged. There is a lot of methane that leaks out of these wells, and so sealing that well stops the methane emissions. But it's currently set up to be hundreds of billions of dollars of expense, so there's no real incentive to clean up these wells. It's a problem that's been building for more than 100 years, and we've got to fix it a lot faster than another 100 years, which basically demands a market solution. We've figured out a way to more or less solve two problems at once, which is take that problem and transform it into an energy storage device. Wind and solar are never gonna gain much more than 30 to 50% of the electricity market without the ability to move their supply around so that it can match demand. They desperately need energy storage to match their supply to civilization's fixed demand curve. That's what we do. The development of our prototype, which we call Artemis Prime, took place in Texas, just outside of Dallas. PCD Works was instrumental in building Artemis Prime. When we convert an idle well into a gravity well, which is what we call our system, we seal the well, thereby eliminating any likelihood of methane leakage. And then we install our device right next to the wellhead. After that's done, we build this long cylindrical weight within the well. In order to store energy, we're lifting that weight up to the top of the well, and that's basically converting electricity from the grid into potential energy and the height of that weight. And then whenever we want to put electricity back on the grid, say whenever the sun goes down and people want to turn on their ovens, we would then be lowering the weight, and that turns a generator on surface, putting electricity back onto the grid. If we were to remediate all of the wells that we think are viable across North America, it would be the equivalent of taking about 500,000 cars off of the road. The technology that we're bringing to the market, everybody wins. Utilities, it's much easier for them to plan how they're going to meet the grid needs. Renewable project developers have a lower cost energy storage solution and oil and gas companies can take care of these liabilities in a way that is both financially and environmentally sustainable. My name is Kim Gregory and I'm the co-founder and CEO of Renewell Energy. I'm Stefan Streckfuss and I am the CTO and co-founder of Renewell.